I was delayed. Salutations. In the previous video, we went over the basic structure of a logical syllogism and the nature of its components. Now we're going to discuss the things which can be put into a syllogism. If not it, what? If not things, stuff? Aristotle identifies ten categories into which all terms used in propositions can be resolved. These categories are substance, quantity, quality, relation, place, time, position, condition, action and passion. Distinguishing between these categories is vitally important when trying to think logically, because the misattribution of a term to the wrong category can lead it to be falsely opposed to another term, or to be left unopposed when it ought to be, and thus produce paradoxes. Um, true. I'll go true. Yeah, that was easy. Substance refers to what a thing actually is, in terms of individual, genus and species. We will pass over this for now, as it will require more elaboration than the rest of the categories combined. Quantity is that in virtue of which each thing is said to be present in a certain way, either in a whole or in a part. Quantity refers to number, extension, and other such aspects which are measurable in numerical terms. That's a lot of fish. It is divisible into continuous quantity and discrete quantity. Continuous quantity is found in weights and measures, and are arbitrarily divisible. Consider a continuous line, which you can divide into feet, centimetres or Egyptian royal cubits, or into inches, millimetres or infinitesimal fractions of a light year. On the other hand, discrete quantity is resolved only into immutable units, like the number of Pringles in a tube. How many cigarettes have you got, lad? Quantity corresponds to matter and to particulars. In fact, Aristotle refers to mathematical objects such as numbers and shapes as being partially constituted of what he calls intelligible matter. By this, he means that they possess something which allows them to exist separately whilst being identical in form, as discrete or continuous quantities of the same substance. Quality, then, is the character of the sensible object in virtue of which it is said to be such and such. Quality encompasses all distinguishing attributes such as colour, texture, shape, electromagnetic properties, or similar properties or accidents that an entity has which cannot be reduced to the other categories. Quality corresponds to universals and to form, especially to morphe, or material form, which is the province of Aristotle's treatment of form. By relations, I mean those things which are said to be in relation to something, as the double to the half, and the greater to the less, and the like. The difference between relation and such things as quantity, position, or place is the presence of a contrary against which it is set. An entity cannot be in itself equal, greater, or half. It must be equal to, greater than, or half of something else. You're a big guy. For you. Here, the relation acts as a mean term which joins the two extremes, like the term shared between the two premises in a syllogism. Place, then, is the primary immobile limit of the thing contained, which is itself the limit of the container. Time is a measure of emotion and of being moved, and it measures the motion by determining a motion which will measure exactly the whole motion, as the cubit does the length by determining an amount that will measure out the whole. These seem fairly self-explanatory. In the event that you are watching this video and are unfamiliar with the concepts of time and space, welcome to the universe! Please leave a comment describing your dimension of origin and what sort of things it has instead. Position, on the other hand, requires some consideration, especially since Aristotle refuses to elaborate beyond giving examples of reclining and sitting. Uh, why, why, we'll elaborate on that. No, I won't. <laughs> um... Position differs from place in that it is replicable across place and time. A man can sit on a wide variety of surfaces, retaining the same position in different places. In this sense, it can be thought of as a configuration or pattern. Condition or state is, like relation, a term that is only applicable in reference to something else, and establishes a connection between the two things. The Greek is echein, and comes from a verb meaning to have. Aristotle gives the examples of shod and armed. In general, it can be thought of as to be with or without something else. An action is the exercise of an active capacity or an active state, 
as building is the exercise of the capacity to build, and being built is the exercise of the passive capacity to be built. Action is to exercise an existing power to produce an effect, and can be done to another or to the actor itself. Congratulations, you played yourself. Passion is to receive the effects of an act from something else. It is the opposite of action, as passive is the opposite of active. For example, when scissors cut paper, to cut is the action of the scissors, and to be cut is the passion of the paper. With all of the other categories out of the way, we will return to the issue of substances. A substance is what a thing actually is in itself, while all of the other categories are attributes which are possessed by or applied to substances. Substance, in its strictest first and chief sense, is that which is neither predicated of any subject, nor is in any. How predication works should be easily understood if you watched the previous video. A predicate is what is said about something, as based is said of Sternberg. To be in a subject is something a bit harder to grasp. It does not mean, as one might expect, that it is spatially contained by the subject or is a component part of it. What is meant is something which cannot exist on its own apart from the subject, but only exists insofar as the subject it is in exists. A nugget of purest green! <laughs> Substances are divided into primary and secondary, while secondary substances are further divided into genus and species. Secondary substances, like primary ones, cannot be in a subject, but they can be predicated of a primary substance. It is common, however, to every substance not to be in a subject, for neither are the primary substances in a subject, nor are they predicated of any, but of the secondary substances, that none of them is in a subject is evident from this. Man is predicated of a particular man, but is not in a subject, for man is not in a certain man. Predicates can be said of other predicates, as well as of primary and secondary substances. Thus, you can have a chain of predicates, each applying to the next, ending in a substance. For example, we can say that procrastination is predicated of laziness, that laziness, along with cowardice, stupidity, sexual disorders, and mental illness are predicated of Redditors, and further, that Redditor is predicated of Joe. Therefore, Joe procrastinates. Can we all sign a petition to shut Reddit down, to ban Reddit? For some predications are said of only one thing, as individual terms like Socrates, this man, and this object, but others are said of many things, such as genera, species, differences, properties, and accidents that occur jointly in many and not uniquely in one thing. An example of genus is animal, of species, man, of difference, rational, of property, capable of laughing, of accident, white, black, sitting. The terms genus and species, as used in classical philosophy, do not have equivalent meaning to their contemporary use in biology. A species is simply a grouping of entities which cannot be further divided in substance except into individuals. We're all individuals! Yes! We're all individuals! Porphyry's example here is man, and while it is possible to differentiate between men of different races or nations, it is not possible to draw certain precise conclusions about the nature of a given man from his race, as things like height, facial structure, skin colour, and temperament, which vary across races, also vary between individuals. Whereas we can know for certain that a man naturally possesses two hands and two feet, merely on account of him being a man. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! A genus is a grouping of species, or a grouping of other genera. Species and genera are considered substances due to the fact that they contain substances. When you refer to a genus or species, you must inherently be referring to the individual substances that make up that group, the equivalent of which is not true for the other categories. So much for the categories. In the next video, we'll dive into some relevant Aristotelian terminology from the metaphysics. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.